River Aussie Shaft Drive locomotives make their first and only appearance in the 1963 AHM catalog. The L5012 Indiana Harbor Belt 080 is one of two locomotives to have this drive. The second locomotive is the L5017 Baldwin American 280 Consolidation. Interestingly, not mentioned in the catalog is the strange abundance of 080s rather than the 280 pictured in the catalog. These 080 variants also do not feature the full valve gear package. It's anyone's guess as to why exactly so many of the 280s are missing these components from factory. Now the 080 Indiana Harbor Belt locomotive is the only engine of these two to reappear in future catalogs and was also retooled and reproduced for many years after this. Another interesting bit of information is the use of a similar drive in Tyco's 4 for Row General which came around about the same time. These are the three examples I have in my collection of these locomotives. The example on the far left is the Indiana Harbor Belt 080 which is, unfortunately has fallen into disrepair over the years but is making slow progress towards its full restoration. The middle locomotive is a Baldwin 280 which is an example of the strange missing parts variant but overall is in the best condition of the three. It has been repainted at some point in its life and now wears a southern paint scheme. On the right is the worst of the three. It is more of a parts locomotive as it has no tender and is in very poor general condition. Let's have a look under the hood of one of these locomotives. With the shell of the tender and the locomotive removed, we can get a better look at how everything works. Contained inside the tender is the three-pole River Rossi motor and reduction gearbox. You may also notice the cracked broken piece that connects the motor to the chassis, which we'll come back to later. Moving forward, we come to the rubber hose and connector that is able to be separated for servicing. Also underneath the loco are two wires that connect the power between the tender and loco. The wire coming from the tender is for the headlight in the loco and the wire coming from the loco is the power to the motor. Reaching the chassis we can see exactly how the power is transferred to the drivers via worm gear. In theory this drive would seem quite sound and work well. But there was one fatal flaw that was overlooked during the design process. The metal used to construct the tender chassis and gearbox cover is a metal known as zinc. Zinc has a tendency to crack and fall apart when it contains impurities within the metal. This reaction slash process is known as zinc rot slash zinc pest and can completely rot to bits over time. This type of metal was popular in use among toys of the era, and unsurprisingly, these two locomotives were not the only River Rossi engines to use zinc. The reason this is so crucial here is that without a proper tender chassis, there is no way to get power to the locomotive. Unfortunately, so many of these locomotives have become susceptible to zinc rot, and that's why very few working examples exist today. Luckily, River Rossi had realized their mistake, and the 080 IHB locomotive was given a different drive and continued production for many years. The same cannot be said for the 280, and it was not given a new drive and rather was discontinued. Now with all of this being said, when properly serviced and free of zinc rot, these locomotives run very well for their age, although a tad noisy. If you are fortunate enough to find an example free of zinc rot, it might be worth your while to purchase it. It's important we preserve these engines for a future generation of modelers just to show how far locomotive tooling has come. And with that, I leave you all with some footage of these beautiful and unique locomotives running.
hey, if anyone has a boiler front for that uh, that 080, um, uh, hit me up. 